would be the point of learning English if we spoke English perfectly without any mistakes, if we understood everything someone else was telling us, and if we remembered all the words immediately from the first day. People who don't practice having conversations on a regular basis so they can speak better because they are so afraid of not being able to speak perfectly are basically dropping themselves of the joy of learning and growing and improving. Because when you participate in a conversation in English where you might feel a bit intimidated, you might feel a bit scared because you can't think of all the words immediately, you might need to resort to using simple words to express yourself, and you might feel a bit uncomfortable because you still make mistakes after months or years of practice. But after that conversation, how do you feel about yourself? Don't you feel enormously proud of yourself that you've accomplished something, that you've done something most people never take the courage to do? What happens if someone chooses not to participate in a conversation because they expect to speak perfectly without any mistakes, which is like, show me anyone who speaks English without mistakes. They expect to understand every single word and remember all the words. They feel comfortable because they avoided the scary part, the uncomfortable part, which is to show up in front of other people and practice, but how do they feel after choosing not to participate in a conversation, choosing to avoid having conversations? Pretty bad, right? In this video behind me, you can see my suitcase. You might recognize this from previous videos because I'm preparing to move continents. You're gonna hear about this more, especially if you're signed up to my newsletter. You're going to hear about something that not many English teachers or English coaches talk about. We all learn about this during a master's degree or teacher training, which is the key to understanding why is it so hard to put a whole sentence together without making mistakes or to use complex expressions and phrases that you really want to use in that moment, but you just simply can't do that. And it's not even about taking action or not taking action, because if you've seen enough videos of mine, you know that the only reason I was able to build my fluency and overcome my insecurities and build a company that is now helping and coaching other professionals, academics, business owners to speak English confidently as well, was taking action, communicating consistently with other people. It's more about your expectations that you can choose for yourself. And why the worst thing a struggling English student can do is expecting to speak English perfectly, to have everything figured out from the first day, expecting to remember vocabulary when they want to, and expecting to speak without making any mistakes. When someone starts playing football, let's say they play with their friends or they join the local team, can they expect to play football at World Cup quality on their first practice? And can they expect to play at World Cup quality at their 50th match? What about their 100th match? The truth is, if you see any football World Cup champions or anybody else who's winning at the Olympic Games, which is coming up this summer, they have all gone through hundreds, if not thousands, of opportunities to practice, play matches, trainings to get where they are. And the same works for learning to speak English, which is at least as complex of a skill as playing football well is. The reason confident English speakers, effective English communicators, have got to advanced proficient level of English where they remember a lot of words, they can use complex expressions and express themselves effectively and confidently at a meeting or in an everyday conversation, not because they weren't making mistakes, remembered all the vocabulary or understood everything people they spoke to told them, but because they understood how they can improve without feeling stressed. And this is what this entire video is about. And you're gonna find out about this key word, probably no one has ever told you in just a few minutes. What causes a lot of stress in a lot of struggling English students way of learning English is expecting to speak perfectly because it robs them of what I talked about at the beginning, the joy of learning, growing and improving through challenges. Isn't it overcoming your challenges, facing your fears and making the decision to make time for what most people don't take the courage or make time for, having regular, consistent conversations with someone else to improve their communication skills and speak English confidently that fills you with joy, with accomplishment, with pride that lift you up. Effective English communicators, the moment they join my program, the Proficiency Fortress, they learn about this incredibly important piece of information that helps them take action, stay consistent with their practice and rise up to their challenges. And it's the same reason 
sometimes someone cannot expect to play the guitar really well after three months of practicing or play football at World Cup level, even after a year of practicing playing football. Just like struggling English students find it hard to put a sentence together without making mistakes, without freezing up, thinking of the next word and the reason they might not remember all the words they want to use cognitive load. And understanding how big of a role cognitive load, which is basically your brain's current capacity to speak English and communicate with other people, plays, is what helps my students optimize their learning so they can keep making progress every single month. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chubby. I'm an English fluency learning and language anxiety coach and this is a channel for serious English learners entrepreneurs, ambitious professionals, academics or students who want to make more vocabulary more memorable and who want to learn how to speak English more comfortably, confidently and freely with the help of improving their listening and spoken interaction. And if these are topics that you're interested in and you haven't signed up yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get all my updates, long form, short form videos, all kinds of posts that I share so you can learn to speak English fluently and confidently. You should spend a week visiting sites in central Tokyo. Your best bet would be to spend a week visiting sites in central Tokyo. There's no harm in spending a week visiting sites in central Tokyo. These are just some of the sentences we recently learned with my B2 upper intermediate students in a conversation-based class to talk about how to give advice at more advanced levels. And out of these three sentences, which one do you think an elementary or pre-intermediate level English learner is going to be able to use with ease? The first one, you should do something. It's a pretty simple structure. Everybody uses it all the time. And when an elementary level student decides to use it in a conversation that is about giving advice. They are likely to achieve their goal of communicating their advice, regardless of how complex that sentence was. But they may struggle to say things like, your best bet would be to, or there's no harm in, because these are just simply grammatically more complex. Just like you can't expect to run 10K the first day you start running. When I started running in the gym, I could barely run for what? two kilometers because your body isn't prepared for that amount of practice. Struggling English students can't expect to use complex phrases without putting in the practice. So their brain is actually prepared to help them speak with that level of complexity. It just simply takes time, practice and consistency. And if you're anything like me, because I remember I used to struggle a lot. My native language is Hungarian and we have a completely different way of talking about conditionals. You know, I would, I had done or um, if they did something. Sometimes we need to really think about what comes next or in which part of that conditional sentence we use past perfect and which one we use would, would have, because it's just so cognitively demanding and complex that we just need a lot of practice with that, even at like B2 level. So how do we, people in my international fluency community, make sure that we don't overwhelm ourselves and do something that's way too difficult for our brain to do so we get confused and frustrated so we can reduce that cognitive load and then can actually practice having conversations with a natural level of stress which is necessary for us to actually improve our fluency. First of all, they understand the difference between practicing and improvement. And many people kind of confuse the two. Again, I'm going to come with a sports example. If you've ever been to the gym, do you think someone will be able to see a lot of progress with their muscles by keeping on lifting two kilograms for a year? Not really, because that's just practicing. We don't just go to the gym to do exactly the same thing for months and months and months. This is also the same when struggling English students, even people who live in an English speaking environment or can use English at work and they say, well, I speak English with my colleagues or I practice with my speaking partners online, but they don't really see much progress with their fluency. And it's because they focus on practicing, just randomly speaking, without any focus on what actually help them improve, which is 
really honing on in one skill, whether it's a grammatical structure, specific vocabulary, or a communicative skill, which is what we often practice in our community, including how to talk about processes, how to manage a meeting, how to interrupt someone, how to ask other people's advice, or how to negotiate. People in the gym who see improvement in their muscles do so because they start lifting three kilograms and then they do it for a bit and when they see progress they're gonna lift four and then five kilograms and then step by step they're going to be able to gain more and more muscles because they challenge themselves just a bit more than what they are capable of doing. So why wouldn't it work the same way when we are practicing communicating in English and speaking in English instead of expecting to speak and communicate with ease like the way we do in our native language we could focus on just getting a bit better every single time we practice whatever level you are at. the way i don't waste my students time because i really hate wasting my students time all of them are just as serious about learning english as i was and even if it takes researching another method or another way that can really help them improve i'm gonna do that but it all comes down to learning about these four principles of improvement again not practice improvement the first is to get really clear on your current level of fluency many struggling english students think that their level of fluency is the same as their level of grammar or their level of understanding english and many times our ability to speak is going to be at a bit lower if not two levels lower than our ability to understand english once you get clear on this simply focus on the typical expressions that you are about to or you're expected to use at that level because those are the expressions that don't really put a lot of cognitive load on your brain so you can still practice and use them without feeling so much stress without feeling frustrated or overwhelmed inside my program my students rely on this more than a hundred page document that contains all kinds of useful expressions whether it's about giving advice um, inviting other people to share their opinion coming up with solutions together all these kind of different situations that my students are expected to be able to communicate in in their workplace or in their real life and this is a document that i often give away to people who signed up to my newsletter so if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to get a chance to get it in the next couple of weeks or months when i'm giving this away again make sure you either download my free ebook this is my most popular ebook out of the three that are available for free or you can sign up for elevate or you can sign up for elevate which is my free fluency building program which is going to give you an idea of how my students are able to improve their grammar remember more vocabulary and communicate better with the methods, typical activities that we are using in class. Principle number three is a really underrated one. And I don't think a lot of people really think about this when it comes to learning English. Surround yourself with high achievers. If you got to this part of the video, you have more patience than most people who've already clicked off and you have more focus. And if you're anything like me, you're ambitious about your career to build a better life for yourself. You wanna aim for that promotion, for that opportunity to get that job where you can use English. And you want to make sure that you communicate at work way more effectively and more confidently. Most people aren't like us. And this is something I always remember from my high school years when I was always the one who was working the hardest when we had to work in groups of three or four. Most people simply take below average action, just randomly speak, randomly study whenever they can and expect great results very quickly. And if there's one thing that boosts my students' confidence, it helps them learn to speak English way faster and communicate with way less stress and again, show up more confidently is the community they're learning in. Did you know that studies carried out across all kinds of companies show that sitting near a high achiever increases your productivity by 15% on average. No one can improve their confidence and their communication skills without having a reliable, serious partner to practice with. And a lot of people who say, I'm practicing with a speaking partner, often end up wasting their time with someone who just doesn't show up. They don't take it seriously. They don't stay consistent with their practice and they don't really make an effort. And I remember this as well. And I talked about this in a previous video. And the reason I built my fluency program, the Proficiency Fortress, 
around community was one of the reasons I was able to break out of my insecurities and speak without the fear and be able to remember vocabulary and make fast progress was because I chose to surround myself with people who encouraged me to keep going when things got difficult, when I had to deal with loads of things in my life, who inspired me to take courageous action, to risk using new phrases and expressions in every conversation we had, and people who supported me no matter what, even if I made mistakes. And the key to this is respecting yourself enough to say, I belong among the high achievers. I don't want to waste my time with people who don't lift me up, who don't encourage me, who don't support me. And I want to spend time with people who lift me up, who encourage me to keep going. And the fourth one is choose to have a bias for action. Making time and creating habits, however busy your life is, of effectively learning English is what helped all my students reach their goals within just a few months. The importance of which I mentioned, especially how to build and maintain those habits with ease, even for the busiest person in a previous video. Always remember, just like you go to the gym and you keep improving your fitness, you see your muscles grow, when you consistently decide and make the time to go and practice and focus on improving, not just randomly practicing, you're going to see massive improvement in a short amount of time just because you switch from randomly practicing to focusing on doing something that's a bit challenging, like 5% more challenging than what you're currently able to do, reduce the cognitive overload from wanting to speak English perfectly and keep going. Basically, focusing on improvement over practice. I'm going to leave you with what I always tell my students when they start working with me. Your brain doesn't care about how perfectly you speak. You do. Your brain cares about if you speak, if you focus on doing something challenging, and if you speak consistently. So focus on these three. Tell me in the comments, how useful did you find this video? Have you ever heard about cognitive load before? Because I feel like no one really talks about this. This is such a crucial part of focusing on improvement or your practicing. And if you have any questions, something that I didn't talk about in details enough, you have the comment section to ask your questions. Just take the courage and do that. So I appreciate you. Thank you for getting through this video. And I hope you will have an amazing rest of your day.